Today we get to talk about ProPresenter 7.16, which introduces three new functions to ProPresenter. And these, I think, are going to be super helpful for people all across the board. The first one we're going to talk about is HEIC formatting. If you take a photo with an iPhone, typically your photo defaults to HEIC. There's some other formats like JPEG and PNG, but by default, your iPhone does HEIC. And before today, before 7.16, you wouldn't have been able to import those photos into ProPresenter without first converting them to JPEG or PNG. But now you'll actually be able to just drag and drop them anywhere that media can be used in ProPresenter. So we'll show that in a second. Another thing that they did because of the photo thing is that they made it really easy to make pretty photos presentable fast. And so in the past, you would import a photo, maybe it's JPEG or PNG, and it might have been a vertical 9 by 16 photo that you took with the phone. Maybe, maybe you took it with your Android, so it was a JPEG photo. So you import the JPEG photo, and it was 9 by 16. Well, if you're presenting to a screen that's 16 by 9, like a typical projector, or 16 by 10, like a typical projector, um, you would actually have black bars on the sides. And so what they did was they created a preset that you can use where it scales the, the image that you bring in and it adds it to the back of that image and creates like a duplicated image. And it scales it all the way to the whole size of that, that presentation. And then it blurs out that background. So you have the image in the front and then the image du duplicated behind, blown up, blurred out. To create a really cool, pretty look that uh, makes it easier for you to present in a beautiful way really fast. The third thing that I think is the coolest part is they made a way for us to organize our macros in a better way. At my church, we have, I don't know, maybe 40 or 50 macros, and it's a long list, and it's a pain to go through. But now they've made collections, which allow you to be able to go in and sort your macros how you want to sort them into different, essentially, folders, but they call them collections. Um, but also, on top of that, you can also now choose to look at them in thumbnail or button view, or you can look at them in a list still. So you have the list option, you have the thumbnail option, and you could actually organize these in multiple collections. So let's dive into ProPresenter 7.16 and take a look. Okay, so here I have ProPresenter open, and we are going to go ahead and import an HEIC photo. So first, I'm going to take one of the photos that I have on my phone, and I'm going to go ahead and airdrop it to my computer just so I have it over here. Of course, you can get your photo into your computer any way that you know how to do that. I'm going to drag and drop it into ProPresenter. So I can just drag it right here. And... Now it's in my ProPresenter playlist, and if I click it, it is showing on my screen. So easy as that, it's not hard to import a photo. And now that we can import HEIC, it makes it even easier to import our iPhone photos. So now you notice it has these black bars because this is a vertical photo. And so what I was mentioning earlier is now we have the ability to make that look a little prettier without much work. So I can actually right click on my photo and go to Inspector. And then in the expector, I can go to properties and change my scaling option from scale to fit to scale and blur. Now you'll notice behind my image, I have these yellow lines and those are indicating that there is an effect that is going to take place when I click this image. So now if I click this image, you'll see here on my output that I have my main image. And behind that is the same, same image duplicated, full screen and blurred out. So it really creates a nice effect that you can use on your screens that makes it look a little bit more presentable than just black bars without much work. Again, all I had to do was go into the inspector for that image, go to properties and change the scaling option to scale and blur. So now you can import AGIC photo photos and then you can also set the scale and blur option if you want a prettier looking image. But probably my favorite part about what we're going to talk about is macros. So if we go over to macros, you'll no now notice that we have this thumbnail view or basically like a button view. It's almost like if you're looking at an Elgato Stream Deck because you have buttons you can click, um, but they are macros in ProPresenter. So the thumbnail view exists, but you also still have the previous list view. The biggest difference you'll notice in the list view is that the icon that was added to thumbnail view is now available in list view as well. And so you can actually edit this icon if you want to by right clicking and you can go to change color or you can change icon. There are some existing icons here in ProPresenter, numbers, shapes, etc. cetera. Um, but you can also import your own icon. So if you have a JPEG or PNG or whatever that you want to import, you can do that as well. 
Now, the biggest addition here though is collections. So if you go up to this collection area and click it, you'll see macro collections and you can create a new one with the plus button. I already went ahead and created a few, but let's go ahead and create a new one. And we can call this um, timers. This is gonna be where I contain my timers. So I'll go ahead and make that. And I can add in the macro here and create a new one, or I can take an existing one and move it over. So by default, if you're just now upgrading to 7.16, all of yours will be in this default collection. And so if you create a, a macro collection, that's not the default one, you can take any of your existing ones and move them over. So for example, I'm gonna go ahead and select all of these timers. And I'm gonna right click and I want to move them to my timers collection. If I clicked add to timers, what it would do is it would duplicate where they're currently at and add them as well to the other collection. But if I click move, it's specifically going to take them away from where they're currently located and move them to where I want them to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and move them to my timers collection. So now they're no longer in this default collection that started with 7.16. And if I go over to timers, they are in my timers collection. Another thing you could do is you could actually create a collection just for during service. And maybe you call it your favorites or your pinned macros. I would do this if there's some macros that you know you're gonna use a lot during a service, but that you don't use during your setup time before service, or let's say that we just don't want our volunteers to have a whole huge list of macros, but they just need to have a few that they can access during service. Well, you could actually create a new collection and let's, let's create a new collection and call it uh, pinned macros. So I can actually take this and I can drag it to the top. So now it's at the top of my collection list. And I can go ahead and create a new macro, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna take one of my nameplates. Chris Lindbergh will take it and we'll, this time we're not going to move it because if we moved it, it would take it out of that existing macros collection. Instead, I'm going to add it to my pinned macros. So it's gonna be in two places. It's gonna be in my nameplates macro collection and it's going to be in my pinned macros collection. So now if I go to my pinned macros, You'll see that that's there. And let's do this for another one too. Let's do this for one of my lighting scenes. We'll do live preaching lighting scene. I'll go ahead and add it to my pinned macros. Now, if I go to my pinned macros at the top, again, this is gonna be my top collection. I just have access to the two macros that I want to have my volunteers to have access to. So they could just always stay on this macros collection, make it super easy for your weekend services. Personally, I'm excited to see how these macros can be organized and to start organizing more of them myself because I know that this is going to change how we run our productions because even just the ability to create a macro collection where it's just the few that I want visible at a time, I think it's going to be awesome for my team. So I'm excited to see how this affects you and I'm excited to see how this affects me. Um, but even the ability to import the AGIC photos directly into ProPresenter as a time saver and the new preset blur uh, functionality with photos that's that's gonna be awesome so let me know if you have any questions in the comments and let's get to presenting